All right. Well, hello everybody, and it's great to um, it's great to see you all actually. And today in this workshop, what we're going to do, we are going to reclaim the first moment of your day. Right. I would love to start this workshop by asking you, what did you do first thing this morning when you woke up? So write into the chat. What did you guys do this morning? Did you check your emails? Did you check your social media or did you check the news or you went to the toilet or did you drink some water? What is it that you did first thing in the morning? So I'd love to know what you've done. So, OK, we've got Sabah who made a bed. Yes. You listen to the news, you journal. Kaya, you checked your phone. Christina, you checked your social media. <laughs> Lola, you pet your cat. Very nice. That's very nice. Andrea, you showered. Perfect. And you made your bed. You had a coffee. You checked your messages. Audrey, well done. Gratitude. Wow, you guys, thank you for sharing. This is pretty cool. This is very good to see. Yeah. And we've got we've got more coming. Thank you guys. You took taking your vitamin, Kara. Thank you. Yes. So we all have some kind of routine ritual that we are implementing every day right uh, and we are making the choice to actually wake up every day so why don't we choose you know to start the day to set you up for success and focus on what's really important in the morning so in today's session i will share the benefit of having your own morning ritual to actually increase your productivity you'll also find out how you can actually this can actually improve your mood that's actually linked to your daily performance and we'll have a look on how you can get this into the right frame of mind um, so that ultimately this will improve your life as well and well, your day in your life. So we'll learn the difference between a ritual and a routine, as well as a secret on how to stick to your morning ritual. I'll share with you a framework for implementation today. So we'll also have a look at the different type of activities that you can implement as part of your morning ritual. So we'll categorize those activities into four different pillars that you can integrate as part of your daily life. So this workshop will be interactive, right? Uh, you'll have an opportunity to share uh, your ideas in the chat. Um, we'll dig into the science and you will also learn from other people with us today. So um, my intention for this workshop is really for you to be inspired to create your own morning ritual, to really reclaim your morning and energize you to achieve whatever you need to do to shine. So, you know, let's not try to make your morning a commodity. We'll, we want to make them meaningful. And that's, that's what is important. This workshop is not a quick fix, right? You'll need to bring your commitment with regular practice of the tools that I'm going to share with you today and really show up for yourself. So I'll aim to finish in about 40 minutes. I hope that's okay. So uh, just a quick intro. I'm Elodie Levasseur and I'm your host for today. I'm the founder of Dream Sparkle and Shine and I help people to become extraordinary leaders and world-class business, um, building their business and, and the life that they love actually. So I trained with the Neuroleadership Institute and I became a certified brain-based coach. I also have a full-time job where I'm an international marketing director in a global entertainment company. So I'm an entrepreneur, a coach, a marketer, and definitely a big optimist, right? So uh, my mission is really to help people to create sustainable habits for positive change. I host different workshops and one-to-one -one coaching, so you can also go on my website to check it out if you're interested. So I suggest that you have a pen, a piece of paper, so you can take some notes as we go along. Um, and if, you're, if you can try to remove any distraction as much as you can for the next 40 minutes, that would be great because then you can really take everything that we're sharing here today. Um, so let's start, right? So let's see how I can, actually, I'm going to have to reshare my slide. <laughs> I'm sorry about this because that the, what I wanted to do didn't work. So I'm just going to start this again, if that's okay. I'm sorry for the, <laughs> um, for the delay on that, but I think uh, it will be much better once I've got this sorted. There we go. Um, all right, where are you guys? Here you are. I'm so sorry about this. Here we go. We are, we are on. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so let's let's start. So, what is the difference between you know a morning routine and uh, a ritual? 
So actually, you know, when, you're really, when we're looking at a routine that might involve like making, making your bed, exercising, showering, dressing, reading the paper and eating breakfast. And because you've done it so many times, you know what to do and, you know, in which order and you don't have to do much seeking. And the difference between a routine and a ritual is actually the attitude behind the action. So a ritual actually may involve, um, you know, the same activities like uh, making your bed, taking your vitamins, having your shower, but actually it's more, you need to do it in a more meaningful uh, practice, which have a real sense of purpose. So you're doing an activity for a special reason. So for example, if you're doing some yoga in the morning as an activity, you could light up a candle. So that would make it more special as a ritual. And I like to call it ritual because ritual doesn't have to be spiritual or religious, you know, it really, what really matters is your subjective experience. So with ritual, you're fully engaged with a focus on the experience of the task, right, rather than the completion. It's a bit like applying mindfulness to your daily routine. So the morning benefit of having a ritual, do you guys know what could be the benefit of having a ritual? Maybe, yes, you can share in the chat as well. I'm gonna put the chat up somewhere so I can see what you guys are saying. So having your morning ritual actually set the tone of your entire day. It really enhances self-discipline and resilience. It really like boosts your productivity and creativity and it enhances creativity, clarity of your day and really like your purpose in life. So it also can get you closer to your goals and your dream and depending on what you choose to do. And yeah, Lola said it also improves your mental health. And that's so true. It's so true. There are so many benefits. And we've got Audrey as well who's saying you're feeling more centered when you're having a morning ritual. And it's so true. Well done, guys. Yeah. And some people ask me, but it is that's great, but what time should I start my morning ritual? I'm not a morning person. <laughs> We're getting this a lot, right? And actually, you know, sleep is super important for your brain because the lack of sleep can be as lethal as food deprivation because it not only reduces your cognitive performance, but you also reduce your creativity and productivity. So we need approximately between seven to nine, seven to nine hours sleep per night to really maximize productivity throughout the day. And actually research shows that sleep is one of the key factors in predicting one's life expectancy. So, and then too many people are sleep deprived, right? And most of the time, this is also due to our technology. Because, for example, the, the blue light on your phone or on your devices, whatever we, we use, reduce the melatonin level we have in your body. This is those uh, chemicals that induce sleep. So being in front of your screen before you're sleeping will actually prevent you from resting properly. So really turning off your technology at least one hour before you go to bed is, would be ideal. So think about it. I know some, for some people it's really difficult because we're addicted and we're like, oh, but I could check a little bit. But if you're making it a promise to yourself to not to check your phone, you're, you're like, let's even try, do it as an experiment and see how you actually feel. Um, and actually how, think about how you spend the last hour of your day is almost as important as the first when it comes to speaker performance. So it's really up to you to adjust your sleep schedule um, to your wake up schedule, really. So the most important thing, it doesn't matter what time you start your morning routine, is really the idea is for you to stay consistent with your schedule. It's the most important. So not, not try not to press the snooze button, because when you hit the snooze button, and I'm sure there is people in the room, who is a snoozer in the room? Right in the chat, right? Because when you hit the snooze button, you enter into a new sleep cycle. And this extra sleep you do get from snoozing is actually light and fragmented, you know, which actually will leave you feeling more tired. All right. So to avoid the snooze button, there is a couple of things that you can do, you know. So if you use your alarm on your phone, maybe you can put your phone on the other side of the room, right? And so then you have to actually get up to actually turn off the alarm. Um, or you can use the old fashioned alarm, you know, by your bedside, but not, not your phone. Um, there is also apps that exist, which I found out that you can actually scan, you have to scan a product so that the alarm goes off. So it stops you from snoozing. So there is a, an, an app called the barcode alarm. And there is another app if, uh, if, you, if, you, if you're scared of social media, it's a bit like a social media alarm, which actually will post statue on your Facebook or Twitter account if you don't get up. It's called the UHP app. 
Um, so, you know, it could actually be interesting to see, oh, no, 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 you have to get up as well. Everyone's going to know that you snoozed. And once you're up, don't go back to bed, you know, even if it's so appealing, but instead have a full glass of water to refresh your body. Hydration is actually the best gift you can give to your body first thing in the morning. You know, warm water um, with lemon, if you can, it's best, but just like not cold water, just like home temperature, um, because your brain is 73% water and dehydration can actually impair both your short term and your long term memory, as well as your attention. So let's remember to drink your water first thing in the morning, even a glass of water would be perfect. So I can see Katie, uh, we've got a couple of snoozer and Kaya who wake up without an alarm. This is amazing. That's if, and if you wake up every day at the same time, that means that you're getting enough sleep as well. So your body is already used to. I actually wake up just slightly before my alarm now. So I know that I'm, I'm getting, uh, I'm, I'm getting uh, enough sleep, which is, which is actually really good. Yeah, we've got a couple of people who get, who get up before the alarm goes off. So let's start to create your own experience that will make your life worth living, but also the reason you're waking up every morning, right? So we're going to do different, we're going to look at different type of activities that you can implement as your morning ritual, and that will help you with your mood, your performance, and put you into the right frame of mind to win your morning, and ultimately your day. Um, a, a quick research note on your cortisol level so this the cortisol level is like those hormones that the, the, there's the stress hormones they're actually higher in the first one to two hours after you wake up so higher cortisol level actually increase your alertness already so you don't need that coffee first thing in the morning because your lab when you wake up even though you feel a bit tired once you start to wake up your cortisol level your stress hormones they they, they wake you up and then you're like oh okay so you actually actually are already awake at least for the next one to two hours after you wake up and again try not to look at your phone first thing in the morning because if you can put your phone out and not look at it for 60 minutes an hour before you actually start the day you can actually be 100 percent into your morning ritual and um, because if you check this important email, if you check this social media, if you check your notification, what you're doing, you're actually priming your brain for distraction for the rest of the day. And this is actually causing information overload that hits you before you're completely awake. And what that will do, it will actually interfere with your ability to prioritize tasks. So you'll, you'll probably feel more distracted throughout the day because you, in the morning you wake up and we're giving you all this information already and you're like, ooh, I don't know what to do with it. So it's actually quite good to just put it off for the first 60 minutes and focus on your morning ritual, your time actually, or whether it's with your kids, but we can talk about this as well. So to build your morning ritual, we're gonna, we're gonna have a look at four different pillars um, that will help you uh, to add morning activity as part of your ritual. So if you've got a pen and paper, I recommend you that you do um, a little design like this with four different square um, so that we can have a look at those different pillars. So, um, there we go. So, I can see that. So there is four different pillars and those pillars are heart set, health set and soul set. This is a, the four pillars that we're going to do. So if you want to write them down at the top of each um, frame, then you can actually write down the number of activities that we're, we're going to talk about. And obviously, take what is, is it that you need in this session, right? Not everything will be applicable, but you're probably going to see um, a couple of things. And so the first thing we're going to try, we're going to start with is heart set. So when I talk about heart set, I'm talking about meditation, visualization. And when I talk about meditation, actually in neuroscience, we look at mindfulness meditation. So mindfulness meditation is accepting awareness of the present moment without any judgment, you know, of being in the here and now. So, and, and meditation actually alter networks in the brain that improve your emotional and physical well-being. Several studies have revealed that meditation not only increase brain efficiency, but it also improves your emotional regulation. So even if it's three to five minutes of meditation will actually help you to start your day with a positive mood. Right? Try to spend time in silence with your meditation. We're so bombarding with noise all day that the idea is to really remove 
your thoughts when you're meditating, but you won't achieve that until you've done 20 years of meditation. So, but like, if you can just observe your thoughts, that's probably the first step, you know, try to listen to your breathing. And if you see so, just, just let them come and don't judge the experience. So, and if you need to set a timer because you think you're probably like into your meditation space, just five to 10 minutes would be, would be perfect. You can also use this time for visualization. That's another thing that you could be doing. So the, the, even the world's best athletes use visualization because if they can win in their mind, so you know when they actually do the game, it's much easier for them to achieve it. Don't try to visualize the end results, but the activities. So see yourself making that call. See yourself going to the gym. You know, visualize yourself opening that computer to try to write this first chapter of your book. You know, and see yourself doing it with enjoyment, with a smile on your face, even if it's something you actually don't like doing. But it's been proven that, you know, the brain actually has the same activity when it visualizes doing an action as it does when it's physically performing an action. So if you're visualizing an accomplishment or like the walk in the park or you're you going to the gym, that and you, you're visualizing with joy you know then your brain won't make the difference between what's real and what's imaging so it's really interesting how our brain actually works and researchers have looked into breathing pattern as well so breathing is another exercise that could be part of your heart set so um, we've looked at breathing pattern and found that our body are actually running low on oxygen first thing in the morning so practicing um, breathing techniques can actually help oxygen your body. Um, there is uh, somebody called Wim Hof, the breathing method. Um, I'll, I'll try to put a link into the chat. And that's, that is actually um, a really good uh, 10 minutes breathing exercise for you to do in the morning to oxygen your body. So I would love to know and share what can you think, what activity can you integrate as part of your heart set morning ritual? Like after what I've shared, so I've shared a couple of things, but maybe you're thinking of something else that could be helpful for you. So what is it that you could be implementing as part of your heart set morning ritual? Visualization, breathing, meditation. What is it that you could be thinking about implementing? So write into the chat. I'd love to see. So we've got some meditation here. So somebody wants to try to make some meditation as part of their morning ritual. Affirmation, yeah, we'll come into it. Breathing, breathing and meditation. Tatiana, very good, yeah. Mm -hmm. Journaling, journaling is a good one as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll come to that. Yeah, there is a couple of things. So let's move to the second pillar. And the second pillar is body movement, is health set. So it's anything to do with you moving your body. So it could be yoga, it could be gentle stretch, it could be dancing, short run, or even a walk. You know, and if you're feeling really energetic, you can actually do some high intensity training. It's up to you, right? But do whatever you can do to move your body. And numerous studies have demonstrated the, moon, the many positive effects of exercise of your brain, you know, on, on the brain. So exercise can actually increase your blood flow in the brain and this really helps activate those genes that are responsible for neuroplasticity which are those neural connections that you make throughout life and it will improve the function of your brain overall so you'll see if you exercise in the morning you'll see it will have an effect on your mood your self-esteem your memory and it will help with your ability to focus and concentrate like even if you do regular aerobic exercise this actually um, appears to boost the size of your hippocampus. So I know there's a term, so what is this? So it's actually the part of your brain that is involved in learning and into your verbal memory. And actually, if you do this exercise on a regular basis, you, have, you can actually have more memory and you, you can actually learn easier as well. Even if it's 60 seconds of jumping jack, right? It could actually make a difference to your whole day because you're breathing hard, you're making oxygen into your body and your blood flow is circulating. So 60 seconds, right? Strength training as well, or yoga, have also shown to decrease symptoms of depression. Um, and a study was done in Australia actually that found that um, a, morning, uh, a morning with a moderate, um, intensity exercise improve actually your cognitive performance, which it's, it will help you with decision making across your day. 
So moving your body, even in small movement, will actually have this immediate effect on your mood. Um, you'll become more creative at work. It will improve your ability to shift and focus your attention. And probably you're going to ask me, but why do I have to exercise in the morning? <laughs> um, and I'm not a person to exercise in the morning. I like to go soft and slow. But, you know, I do a couple of exercises. And actually what I do to move my body to get that blood flow going is that I, I dance. I put the music that I like. I do my stretching and then I dance. So then I know that I'm, I'm, I'm actually putting some blood flow into my body. Uh, but exercise in the morning before you start work not only spikes your brain activity and prepare you for the mental stresses for the rest of the day, it also increases retention of the new information. So you'll remember things better. And you will also have better reaction to complex situations. So you're more likely to respond to situations and to react to situations. So it's actually really important when you do this in the morning. And you're less stressed when you start to work. And maybe one last fact uh, to inspire you to, to, for you to work out in the morning is actually, you know, a study was found that you can burn up to 20% more body fat by exercising in the morning before your first meal. So think about what type of body movement you could be doing in the morning. So if you can write into the chat what kind of activity you can integrate as part of your health set morning ritual. There is an app as well, if you're interested, it's called the seven minute workout. Um, and you also can find some video on YouTube. Uh, and it's just a seven minute workout. If you do this every day, you'll, you will see an improvement onto your body as well. Just seven minutes. So we've got a couple of people sharing their exercise in the morning. So we've got Pilates, yoga, stretching, yoga again, hula hoop. Wow, what a great idea. That's amazing. That's a very good idea, actually, for your hips and very, very good, very feminine as well. <laughs> I love it. Thank you for sharing, guys. So we're going to move to our third pillars. And the third pillar is soul set. So soul set is about reflection. You know, it could be in the form of writing a journal. So somebody, some people mentioned journaling before, and this is, this is part of your soul set ritual. So, and for some people, writing a journal might be difficult, you know, because you might not know where to start or you might not know what to write. Um, there is a couple of things that you could be doing. So there is a book called The Artist Way, and it was written by Julia Cameron, Cameron and she, she talks about the morning pages. And the idea is that you don't let your pen stop moving. So you don't censor any of your expression. You don't even think about what you're writing. It's really pure stream of consciousness. Even like writing down, I'm not sure what to write. You know, nothing is ridiculous because you'll see you'll start activating your brain into retrospection and ultimately you will reflect. I don't know if you know, do you know guys how many thoughts we have a day? Do you guys want, want to think about how many thoughts actually your minds have a day? Do you want to write into the chat? I, I probably will give you only like five seconds because I know of the time, but um, you don't know. Anyone wants to guess how many thoughts? So go, go high. <laughs> well, I'm going to share it with you. So we've got 10,000. Oh, where we go? Here we go. It's coming now. 10,000, 50,000, and it's more. We have between 60,000 to 80,000 thoughts a day. And of those, 80% are negative, and 95% are repetitive thoughts of the day before. So interesting, right? So if, if you can actually write those thoughts down, you actually, what you could be doing is you could probably break a pattern or even a bad habit, you know? And the first thing that you can do by it's noticing them. So noticing by writing down those thoughts that you have in the morning could be also um, a good idea. And a study was found by UCLA psychology that actually putting your feelings into words and into paper will make actually feelings of sadness, anger, and pain less intense. So when you label your emotion, and it's proven by neuroscience in my studies, with even one or two words, 
it will actually reduce the response in, this, in the amygdala, which is a part of your brain that serves as an alarm to activate biological systems that actually protects your body in terms of danger. So I'm talking about those reactions that you have when you are into the fight, flight, or freeze response, you know, when you're triggered by something. So if you're labeling them, then it would reduce this emotional arousal. You, you can say, oh, I'm feeling, I'm feeling sad. Oh, I'm, I'm actually feeling angry. Where is this anger? So acknowledging where it is in your body, putting a word to it, actually re re reduce that response, re reduce this emotion. So you can start to journal how you feel. It's a great way to start the day. Ask yourself every morning, how are you feeling right now? Write about your worries, your deepest thoughts, the feelings about the coming days. You can write about your dreams, your goals. And actually in ancient Egypt, um, writing was considered as a sacred art, it, a form of magic that combines thoughts and emotion to produce outcome. So here we talk about manifestation, right? Writing could be quite uh, an interesting thing to try. So a great thing to write about also in your morning journal is feelings of gratitude. So feelings of gratitude, you know, what are you grateful for? You, when you express feeling of gratitude for someone or something, you, you do more than actually making yourself and the other person happier. You also create fundamental and positive change in your brain. So that's pretty positive. And when you start to focus on the things that you already have in your life that are good, your brain becomes better at discovering similar things. So feeling of gratitude will definitely increase your dopamine level, which has a pleasure hormone, and the serotonin levels, which are the hormones that helps you with feeling good and stabilizing your mood. So gratitude really has been shown, um, if you practice it on a, on a regular basis, it will increase um, your generosity and compassion for yourself, but for other people too. So you're not only rewarding yourself by writing what you're grateful for, but you're also rewarding others. Um, and you, in, it, you know, it, it means that you, it's, you want to connect more with people by giving more um, because you're so grateful of the things that you have in your life. And there are so many things you can be grateful for, right? Your bed, the smell of coffee, um, uh, the books that you're reading, the electricity or even the food that you're eating. So, you know, you, if, you, if you think you're stuck about gratefulness, think about the simplest things that, you, that make you happy. And in your morning journal, that's, that's actually a really good thing to write. Um, somebody asked, does it have to be a writing or is it audio journaling helpful? Um, writing actually on the, the, the act of writing is actually proven that it actually has a better impact on your brain than um, writing on a computer. On audio, it's also helpful if you're going to go back and record it. But actually, the art of writing, you can, you can actually go back to your book and notice some patterns within your um, journaling. So if you, after, let's say, two weeks of journaling, you want to go back and have a look at what you've written, you can actually see and notice some patterns. You, so probably you're like so uh, grateful for a couple of things, like let's say um, you're grateful that you're calling your family. And if this comes back often, this actually is attached to your values. And then you, you understand more of what you like. So you can bring this more into your life. I hope that makes sense, Saba. But I'm happy to chat as well a bit later. So the other thing you can do in your morning journal is write affirmations uh, or intentions. Um, and remember, words are magic. So if you're going to write, there is a difference between affirmation and intention. And I'm gonna share what it is with you. If you're gonna write affirmation, um, then it's more on the line of a declaration that something is true, it's believable. You don't wanna to lie to yourself, right? You don't wanna say, I am rich because that's, I mean, you are probably rich, but you can say I'm a millionaire or I'm a billionaire. So that's a different affirmation. So for example, for the affirmation to be effective, it needs to be in the present tense, in the positive, personal, and it needs to be specific. So affirmation is probably like affirm what you are committed to do. And I'll share with you um, an example, right? I am committed to be at peace. So I'm committed to achieve total well-being today. So that's an affirmation. Affirmation not only amplifies the intention in your mind, but it also activates the reward center in your brain. So it's actually really good. So you can write an affirmation of what you think your day is going to be. So if you're going to write an intention, 
that would be the mental state that represents your commitment to carry out an, an action that will ensure the success of your affirmation. So intention involves more of a mental activity, such as you know, planning or, you know, and it's a powerful way to set the direction of your thought for the day. So for example, if your affirmation is, I'm committed to be at peace, your intention could be, my intention today is to remember to breathe at work and really to take those mindful break. So that could be, because that would be the activities that you will be doing to achieve your affirmation. I hope that makes sense and I'm happy to discuss more. Your morning reflection is really all about improving your relationships that you have in your mind. So the really effective journaling can really help you reach wide range of goals, you know, clear your head and make those important connections between how your thoughts are making you feel and how your feelings are translating into behaviors. There is a, an app called the Five Minute Journal, but they also have a book. Um, I'll put the, the link in the chat because it's actually really helpful. And this book is actually, you can actually, it's pre-prompted um, grateful things that you can do today to make a difference um, and get you closer to your goal. So after everything that I've shared, I'd love to know in the chat, what is it as part of your soul set morning ritual you could be implementing today? Is it journaling? Is it, what are you going to be journaling about? Are you journaling about gratefulness? Are you going to be journaling about your affirmation or your intention, your thoughts? What is it that you would like to journal every day? Mm, journaling about your worries, but also about gratitude. Yeah, thank you, Tatiana. That's really beautiful. Yeah, Christina, journaling, manifestation, grateful, reflection, all, all of it. <laughs> Perfect. We love it. Yes. Uh, and Audrey in more affirmation. And yes, thank you for sharing. This is this is really nice. Yeah. So the, the last um, the last pillar that I'm going to share with you is mindset ritual. So it's your fourth pillar. And my, by mindset, um, I mean, probably like learning self-development. So reading a book, listening to a podcast, an audio book, you know, or reading an article in a newspaper, something that will help with your personal growth and inspire you. Um, or learning a new language, for example, uh, that, could, that could be helpful. So that would be like into a development. So Rosine, because you just wrote in the chat, so that would probably be part of your mindset into your learning and your self-development and the benefit actually of reading in the morning will actually help you to focus um it will help with your focus throughout the day and it will help with your short-term memory and will improve your communication skills it will also reduce your stress to name a few right and according to a study six minutes of sustained reading each day can reduce your personal um, stress level by 68%. So it could, it could really help to clear your mind, to minimize that tension in your body. So whatever the topic um, you want to improve your life, you know, maybe you want to be happier. There are a hundred books on that. Maybe you want to have a better marriage or better relationship. There are a hundred books of that, on that, right? So even if you read five pages a day, that's 150 pages a month. So that's like one book a month. That's 12 in a year. Can you imagine what you would have read in a year and how you could have improved, even like if it's, even if it's learning a new language, right? If it's learning five words a day, then can you imagine 150 words <laughs> a month? So that's actually quite good. Um, there is somebody called Jim Ron who said, actually, success is something you attract by the person you become. And I really connect with this um, uh, with these uh, things and there is some great podcast that you can listen right and if you need some recommendation I would be more than happy to uh, share some with you um, so if you uh, write into the chat you know what is it that you could integrate so we've got a couple of people who want to learn new languages which is great um, so so because journaling wouldn't be part of your journaling uh, learning a new language it wouldn't be part of your journaling it's probably because it's, it requires much more thinking and much more brain focus so like reading understanding something so write what kind of activities that you can integrate as part of your mindset morning ritual into the chat that would be good to know 
Yeah, more reading, more reading, a new language and reading. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> perfect. And listening to a podcast. Yeah, perfect. That's also good. I actually do my walk and I listen to a podcast. I do this for 15 minutes before I start working, whatever the podcast is. And, um, and listening to a podcast in another language is really good as well. Yeah, well done. Yeah, thank you, Elizabeth. So a lot of people ask me, but how long should be my morning ritual? How long? So this is really up to you, you know, and there is no um, quick fix. It's, it's whatever fits within your lifestyle. So for example, you could spend 20 minutes on your health set or, and you can do some type of exercise or you can do five minutes on your heart set. Um, so, and you can do 10 minutes on your soul set journaling, you can do 10 minutes on your mindset and you can read a book. And this could be actually, you know, 45 minutes. But if you're pressed for time, you can actually do this in 10 minutes. But the question really, what you need to ask yourself is where do you want to spend most time? So in your, in your drawing, write, you know, what's more important for you? Where do you want to spend most of your time? Is it more into your heart set, more into your soul set, more into your health set, or more into your mindset? Because this will help you to actually figure out how long you want to spend on those different activities. So write it down. You don't have to share it into the chat. That would be fine. I'm just going to have a look. Uh, Amanda, could creating or art be considered as a mindset? Yes, whatever. This is probably like a framework. So if you want to be creating some art, um, if, put it as part of your morning ritual because, because it, it's meaningful to you. And if it could be part of your mindset because it could be, you know, it's actually growing, you know, learning something. And whatever feels good because there, those activities, those pillars are just categories but you can put whatever you feel it's right for you to put in. And how do you make this routine stick, right? So that's how are you gonna make this routine stick? And this is a big question, like what do we have to do? And you know, in short, consistency is key. Um, so if you're short on time, that's okay. And as seen above, you can actually modify your morning ritual for the time that you have. You know, however, keep it consistent, keep practicing, and it will help you to maintain your um, ritual on the long term. You can't expect to be normally good at waking up in the morning if, you, if you're not, you know, just keep practicing. Um, actually, creating a habit doesn't take 21 days, but 66 days, right? So consistency is really key. Even if it's not for long, you don't have to do this for, for 45 minutes. Um, experiment for at least a few days and be patient because it will actually take time for your morning ritual to be part of your life. So you can start small, even 10 minutes a day and or even less if five minutes, you know, if you if you are pressed by time, but then you can increase as you see fit during the day. Martin Luther King Jr. said you don't have to see the whole staircase, just take the first step. And that's, um, you know, just start small, really. So stick with something for a few days and tweak it as necessary. You know, it's okay to experiment a few rituals until you find something that works for you, that's meaningful to you. The other thing that's gonna make it stick is understand your why. Why do you choose to have 40% of your morning ritual on your mindset? Why did you choose to have 20% on your health set? So think about that. Like when you, even in your document, when you have your percentage, like think about why is it that you want to spend that much time on that? What, what, what do you want to achieve from there? Friedrich Nietzsche um, said once that if you know the why, you can live anyhow. So knowing your why really, um, wh why you're doing your morning ritual is really important as it will help you stick with it for a few years, you know. So remember that nobody can motivate you. you I can't motivate you. The only thing that will motivate you is really your internal engine um, that it's inside you. It will say, this is why I'm doing this. So trade your morning for what you love. What, you know, what I've shared with you, those four categories, a framework. Take what you need. I really encourage you to create your own. The other thing is to have an accountability partner. Try to find a friend or actually somebody that probably you don't know or you, you know, but you don't hang out much with that person. But, and what that will do is if you, because the other person also might have some goals that they are trying to reach. So set up bi-weekly calls and see how, how you're doing on that, on that morning ritual. Are you sticking with it? So if, if you need encouragement, find a buddy. Yeah, make a list of three people that you know you could think that could be do, doing this with you. 
And actually 65% of people are more likely to meet a goal after committing to another person. And if you want to increase your chance of success by actually 95%, <laughs> um, if it's to build those ongoing meetings with the partner to check on the progress. So that has been proven by the American Society of Training and Development. And if you don't have an accountability partner, call me, <laughs> whatever it is. Or even, you know, join, um, there is a group uh, on Facebook called the Miracle Morning on Facebook. So, so even join like a couple of Facebook groups, like you probably find one. So the other thing is about writing the steps. So I know we're a bit over time. I hope you can stay. Um, it probably will take four or five minutes uh, more. Um, so the other thing that you can do is to write up the process of your morning ritual. So to write up the process, I'm going to give you a little framework about how you can do that. Um, oops, here we go. So this framework basically will really um, help you to create this ideal morning routine for you. So I'm using the example of the staircase, basically. So, and actually you can use it, you know, behind your paper or on the side of your, and, and, and that's basically writing up the process. What will you do after you wake up? So for example, after I wake up, I will do X, which my X will be, I'm gonna do five minutes of breathing exercise, which will be part of my heart set. And after I do my breathing exercise, I will do Y. And my Y is so 60 seconds of jumping jack, my health set. And after I do my jumping jack, I will do Z, which is 10 minutes of reading five page of my book. And that would be in your mindset. And after reading my book, then I will do A, which will be my five minutes of journaling. And here we go. You've got your 21 minute process, you know, of how you can do your morning ritual. So writing that process is actually really important because it sticks in your mind and then you can adapt it. You can change it over time. You don't have to do this all the time. So uh, we, today we've covered, we have covered quite a lot. Uh, we've covered the difference between the routine and the ritual, the benefit of having a morning ritual, the four pillars of your morning uh, ritual. So the framework, health set, mindset, heart set, soul set, and how long you can practice in the morning and how to make it stick. I would love to know what is your main takeaway of this workshop? So if you can write into the chat, I would love to know. And we've got a couple of questions. So could creating or arts consider as mindset? Yes, definitely. Yes, I think we've replied to that. Should, Rosine, should all of this be done before eating? Um, well, it's up to you, actually. Um, so it depends what you do. Um, I do this before my breakfast, but you can try it out. If you're really hungry when you wake up, just go and have breakfast, you know, and you can do this after. So see what your body tells you. You can try it out, definitely. Um, should all of this uh, writing the structure. Okay, so we've got a couple of takeaway here. Yes, writing the structure, no phone, thank you, Kaya. And Tatiana, <laughs> think of what will help me to write up the process. Yeah, definitely write up the process, forming a habit and exploring what works. Definitely, Julie, definitely, yeah. The importance of a healthy, we've got so many takeaway. This is amazing. Definitely having a consistent morning ritual can really change your day and really ultimately your wife. Find your why. Why are you doing, you know, really the why is key as well. Like why are you spending so much time on your heart set, on your health set, or soul set, or mindset? Why do you want to create that art? What is it? What, why? <laughs> and be patient and keep practicing. Practice makes perfect, right? Um, there is a couple of books that you can read as well. Um, I'll put them into the chat. Uh, one of them is um, The 5 a.m. Club by Robin Sharma, The Morning Miracle by Hal Herald. Those are really cool books um, for your uh, morning ritual. Oh, here we go. And if you guys want to contact me, uh, I can give you a simple guide for morning journal. Uh, so if you sign up here on, uh, on my newsletter, then I will send you a PDF um, uh, so that you can receive this uh, in due time. And that will help you to write about what is it that you can journal in the morning. So it's, it's a framework basically about key prompts. Uh, to help you think in the morning about what you can ask yourself. So thank you so much for participating to this uh, webinar. And I hope this was useful and it really inspired you um, to create your ideal morning ritual. And thank you for uh, staying, uh, <laughs> staying 10 minutes late. Um, so you can also follow me on Instagram. 
Thank you so much.